What's up guys? So Toy Story 4 is less than a week away and let's do something fun. I haven't uh, done a rank ranking video on this channel uh, in a while other than my top 10 best and the worst of the year lists but let's do something fun. Since Toy Story 4 is coming out I thought that I would stop and rank all, well not all, but I guess all of the Pixar villains. Um, every film doesn't have a villain. Like Finding Dory doesn't have a villain. Monsters University doesn't have a villain. If you want to say Roar Omega Roar, that one of the universities is, is the villains, you could do that, but I'm not including them on this list. I do have a list of 15 here uh, are the Pixar villains, so I'm just going to rank them, and then you guys can give me your thoughts uh, about my rankings, who's your favorite Pixar villain, down below. I thought this could be a fun little thing that we could do. So starting at number 15, um, we have Mordu from Brave. It's just a bear, you know, it's at the bottom of the list. There's nothing really going on here. Um, it's just kind of a menacing bear. That's really it. <laughs> so that's why that's at the bottom of the list. Uh, at number 14, we have Axelrod from Cars 2. Uh, this guy, you know, he's very... Um, silly. It's kind of a goofy villain. It's kind of like one of those villains that if he had a mustache, he'd be twirling it. You know, he's definitely one of the more kid-friendly villains. I think uh, Cars 2 is definitely one of the weakest Pixar films. So, you know, he's not a very compelling villain. It's very cliched what happens with that character towards the end of the film, especially. So that's why he's at number 14. Okay, at number 13, we have another Cars villain. Uh, it's Chick Hicks from the first Cars movie. He also makes an appearance in Cars 3, I believe. And uh, he's a very basic, cliched villain, you know. He's, uh, he's just your bad guy who, who, wants to, who wants to win the race. He wants to top light McQueen. He's got a lot to say. He's got a big mouth. Uh, also not one of the more compelling Pixar villains, so that's why he's at number 13. Number 12, another Cars villain, we have Jackson Storm. Out of all these villains from the Cars movies, I think Jackson Storm is the best, even though he's not that great. Uh, he's pretty much the toned-down version of Chick Hicks. He has a few things to say that aren't very nice to Lightning McQueen, but, you know, his main mission is to win the race, uh, and he'll do that, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, and I thought that, you know, the villain was, was not horrible, but he wasn't the greatest either. You know, he was very serviceable for this film, for Cars 3. That is. All right, so number 11, we have a very interesting uh, Pixar villain. It's Otto from Wally, -E, or Autopilot, however you want to uh, call him. Uh, he's not a human, he's, he's a piece of technology, which I think is very interesting. It's a very technology based type film. He's an artificial intelligence, and he, you know, he has his. He has uh, his agenda, you know, which I really liked, and he wants to sort of overthrow the captain of the ship and all that, and I actually kind of really enjoyed that sort of different kind of take on a villain for a film. He's the autopilot. You know, I, I did enjoy that, and it's the artificial intelligence. I thought it was so interesting, and I thought it was handled really well. So that's why he's number 11. Number 10 is Sid from the first Toy Story. Um, he, he's your very basic destructive kid you know um i think he should belong in like a juvenile hall personally but uh you know like he's serviceable for the film for toy story you know he's he's doing all these crazy things all these toys he's blowing up toys uh he's wanting to set them on fire and all this sort of stuff so i did like sid and he was very serviceable for the film number nine it's actually a two-way tie between darla from finding nemo and chef skinner from ratatouille very real life uh, villains. Very human villains, no pun intended, they are humans, but with Darla, you know, she's just this little girl who kills fish. You know, she, she had a, a fish in that picture, she shook it around, she killed it, and she was gonna do the same to Nemo, so she's very dangerous as, you know, for our, for our character, for our lead character Nemo, uh, she is very a dangerous character. And also Chef Skinner, he is a, another very human character who just wants uh, he, he wants to pretty much just to run this restaurant the way he wants to run it, and he kind of, you know, he, he knows there might be some stuff going on with Linguini and this uh, Gusto uh, character, that might this lineage, there might be some stuff going on there, and the, the, the will and all this, so he really wants to just be this very uh, nasty little guy who, you know, just wants to do this restaurant and run the restaurant the way he wants, and he doesn't want anybody to take that from him. So a very human character. Number eight is the screenslaver 
from Incredibles 2. I don't think that this is a great villain. From the whole film, which I absolutely love, this is probably one of my least favorite aspects of it. I don't think it's bad. I think the screen slaver is very serviceable for the movie. Um, and it works. I think it's with some really great action sequences there, but the way that that sort of goes, it, it might be a little predictable, but I think it's okay because it was set up in the film so you could understand why it's happening and you buy into why it's happening, even though it is a little predictable. So I do think that that's okay, but overall, I just don't think the villain is that compelling. It's a good villain, but I think that the next seven are just a little better. So number seven is Hopper from A Bug's Life. This might be a lot lower on some of your lists, but I think Hopper for me, you know, I grew up watching this movie and I had the little action figure of Hopper and I think the voice performance is great uh, for the character. I think that, you know, he's, he's a villain who he wants to, you know, make the bugs work for the grasshoppers, make the ants work for the grasshoppers, you know, get the food for the grasshoppers. They come, they eat, they leave, as they say in the film. So they're very bossy, they're very cruel. And uh, it, it's, it's sort of like a Nazi Germany kind of thing almost. You know, we have to collect the food for them and uh, c collect the food for the grasshoppers. Hopper will be happy. He's afraid of birds. I think he was a very good villain. Number six, it's actually another two-way tie, but from, they're from the same film. And that's Randall and Waternoose from Monsters, Inc. Uh, they sort of work together, so I bundled them together on this list. I think uh, Randall, he, he's such a, a good... Uh, voice, the voice performance is so good, I think. Uh, Steve Buscemi, I believe, is the, the voice performer of Randall. He's fantastic. He's just this conniving little dude. Uh, not dude, but he's just this, this lizard thing. I like that. And Water Noose, you know, he, he has his own sort of secret agenda, what's going on behind the scenes, including Randall, and this device to, to, to sort of get screams from children. Uh, I really loved it, and I think they're great. Uh, very serviceable for the film. Number five is Stinky Pete from Toy Story 2. I actually had him lower on the list, but after rewatching Toy Story 2, he is a villain. He's obviously serviceable for the film, but for half of the movie, this is something that Pixar hasn't done very often. For half of the film, we actually think that he's one of the good guys. But finally, when he, we see that he's actually the bad guy and he's turning the TV off, you know, or he's turning the TV on in the middle of the night and he's doing all this stuff. He doesn't want Woody to go back with Andy. He wants Woody to stay with them so they could go to Tokyo to be in this museum. And he doesn't want anybody to take that away from him. So he'll do whatever he has to do to make that happen. And I did really enjoy that. He'll even slice Woody. He's, he's you know, actually taken uh, violence. He's smacked him. And, you know, he, he's got that rip on his arm towards the end of the film. He, he does to him. I thought that was great. So Stinky Pete is number five. Moving into number four, it's a newer Pixar villain is Ernesto de la Cruz from Coco. This is another interesting villain because he's dead. He's not really alive, but his intentions are very, very cruel uh, when he actually killed Hector, you know, uh, Miguel's actual uncle, grandfather. Papa Coco? I don't know. Wherever he, I haven't seen the movie in a little while, but when he's, rela he's related to him, He's related to Hector, and he actually killed Hector in real life to steal his songs and to steal his fame. And finally, when Ernesto dies, he's in the land of the dead. Co you know, Miguel goes up to him, he thinks that he's actually related to him when he's really not. Hector's the guy who's related to him. So he goes to kill Miguel, and it's, it's, it's a very compelling villain. One of the best Pixar villains, in my opinion. Moving on to number three is Charles Muntz from Up. Another very human villain, you know, he has this goal when he's younger, he wants to get this exotic bird, and he has to go to Paradise Falls to get this bird, and he's been there basically his whole life with these dogs, he's created this technology that they could talk with their collars, I really enjoyed that, I think he's a very realistic sort of villain, he's just been at Paradise Falls his whole life to get this bird, because he can't return without it, he doesn't want to be embarrassed, because I believe in the film, as they say in the opening, you know, he had a sort of faulty skeleton of the thing and it wasn't real or whatever so he doesn't want to be embarrassed again and he has to stay there and when Carl and Russell and you know the house get there he realizes well he thinks you know maybe they're coming to steal my bird you know they're not really here to put the house at Paradise Falls they're here to steal my bird which makes a very cool dynamic and I do have uh, a lot of love for this character I do think Charles Munson is one of the best the top two picks are villains they're probably predictable they're probably at the top two of a lot of people's lists but for me, number two is Lotso from Toy Story 3. 
This is another kind of Nazi Germany kind of villain. Lasso is very much like Adolf Hitler in the sense to where he is the leader of this Sunnyside daycare, and at nighttime it is it is like a, a, a Nazi camp in many senses. You know, they're all locked up. They have to sleep in these crates. You know, all these characters. I love the way that the, the story kind of goes with Lasso. We see another time a Pixar uh, villain. He's actually kind of good for maybe half of the movie, and then all of a sudden when that snap happens, when that click happens, he turns very, very evil and despicable, and we actually see what is going on at this daycare, and Lotso is a fantastic villain, one of the best Pixar villains, and number one, I think it's probably number one on a lot of lists, Syndrome from The Incredibles, such a fantastic, wonderfully written villain, wonderfully vo uh, voice acted villain, animated villain, I love the design of him, Everything that Syndrome has to do in The Incredibles when he starts out as Buddy Pine, Mr. Incredible, you know, it's part of Mr. Incredible's arc to where, you know, he wants to work alone, but then he gets a family, has to work with his family towards the end of the film. I love that, but when he sets off, Buddy Pine at the beginning says, I work alone, that kind of distraughts him, and he says, you know what, I'm going to really become this guy who's going to... It, it, it screwed him up as a kid. So now when he gets older, he's killing all these superheroes with these Omnidroid devices. You know, he's building Omnidroids to destroy each and each superhero. And now finally, he's after Mr. Incredible. I love that. It's that back and forth between them. is fantastic. His monologues are, are wonderful. Syndrome is an amazing villain. And he is my favorite Pixar villain. He's one of my favorite villains in film. I think he's such a well-written character. Um, and yeah, so guys, that's my top 15 Pixar villains. Comment your thoughts in the comment section. What are your thoughts on these villains? How do you rank them? Do you have a top 5? Do you have a top 10? Top 15? Or just who's your favorite Pixar villain? Comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for my upcoming Quickie Wednesday review for Toy Story 3 and obviously my non-spoiler review for Toy Story 4. Very excited about that. Also, a bunch of trailer reactions and other reviews up on this channel you can check out. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and you won't miss any of that. Also, guys, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video and you can also follow me on instagram at king arises 131 guys that's been it thank you very much for watching this video and until next time over and out